In this episode of Weekly Poker Hand, we have a wild hand from one of my favorite video bloggers, Brad Owen. Let's get right to it. We're playing 5, 10, no limit, Texas variety. Pick up king eight suited in middle position. I stretch out the range a little and raise to 30. A lot of people never raise king x suited, but it turns out king x suited is actually a pretty good hand to raise from middle and late position. Nice raise, Brad. Small blind calls, the big blind calls as well. We're going three ways to the flop in position. It comes ace 10 deuce with two spades. We have the nut flush draw and a backdoor straight draw on a board that's good for my range. Checks to me, I bet 50 to represent an ace. The small blind isn't gonna make things easy. He raises to 200. In this scenario, ace, 10, two, two spades. I typically like betting very large. The pot's $90, Brad does go 50. However, this is a spot where this board actually should connect pretty well with the small blinds range. They're gonna have ace 10, ace two suited, and a whole lot of ace X and a whole lot of 10 X. So I think this is a spot where Brad probably just wants to bet a little bit smaller in general with all of the range he wants to bet with. I do realize they are playing deep stack. They're playing something like $3,000 deep at five to no limit. So that is a reason to potentially bet a little bit larger. And Brad does have a hand that doesn't mind betting big because if you do bet and get raised, you're obviously not folding the king eye flush draw. But I do think in general, this is a spot where I'd probably just bet something like 30 with my entire betting range, but it's not that big of a deal. Brad does go 30. Let's see what happens. I don't I'm sorry, not 30. Brad goes 50. I don't look at calendars much, but I must have missed that today is national check raise day. The big blind folds with two cards to come and quite a few clean outs, I call. Just to confirm, not sure if it was clear. On the flop, small blind checks, big blind checks. Brad bets 50. Small blind check raises big to 200. Big blind folds, Brad calls, let's continue. It's down to heads up, the turn is the three of hearts. We don't improve. Small blind bets 400. A call for that amount with one card to come is less attractive. I still make it because there's always a chance that the jack of spades will come on the river, giving us the absolute nuts. So facing the 400 bet on the turn, Brad's only getting about two to one pot odds, meaning he needs to win about 33% of the time to continue. However, when he does make a flush on the river, he's gonna get paid some amount of money. And to be fair, when a flush does not come on the river, he's gonna be able to bluff some portion of the time. Say the river was a five or a four, putting a four straight on the board. Maybe he can run a bluff in those scenarios. Maybe whenever the river's just a brick and the opponent checks, he can blast it and the opponent will fold. So can he call getting only two to one on the river, knowing he's only gonna get a flush on the river about 18% of the time? And I think the answer is definitely yes. It turns out when you're playing deep stack poker in position with a draw to the nuts, you don't wanna do a whole lot of folding. River's a jack of spades. Let's see what happens. Three spades on the board causes some concern for the opponent, he checks. You guys have already seen me bet on the larger side as a bluff in a few hands. I haven't done it for value at all today. I go for it. Betting 1200 12? Yeah. 1200 into $1,290 with about $2,000 behind, give or take. Is this a good bet size? Well, in this scenario, we want to typically bet big with our super duper nut hands because we want to get value from the opponent's good but non-premium hands like sets, two pair, weaker flushes. Now, I will say a lot of people are not going to have a whole lot of flushes on this river because they're just going to bet them themselves. But I do think it's reasonable the opponent has two pair or maybe a set because those would definitely call preflop like pocket tens would often call from the small blind, although it should three bet. Same thing for pocket twos. Same thing with ace 10. The opponent could definitely have ace jack. So there are a lot of very good hands in this scenario. When you are playing live poker against players who maybe you have a bit of a read on, it's very important to ask yourself, how much will my opponent call with two pair? Maybe just an ace, like ace nine or ace queen in this scenario. Again, ace queen should three bet preflop, but a lot of people don't. And I think close to pot may be a tiny bit too big, which is certainly annoying when you have the nuts. But if you're, a lot of your opponent's range is marginal and you can really remove a lot of flushes from their range, I think maybe you want to go something more like 800 just to really try to ensure those hands call close to 100% of the time. Now, if you know your opponent's a bit of a calling station, they're going to call any two pair, maybe even any top pair, then sure, bet big. That's definitely going to be ideal. But I think in live poker, especially when a lot of money starts going into the pot, people do get a little bit nitty and weak. It's too bad that I didn't show any of my previous bluffs because it would have set me up a little bit better to get called here. I was hoping that the opponent might have had a smaller flush and would have called immediately. That doesn't seem to be the case. 
He's a viewer of the channel and has seen me make some big bluffs in the past. Maybe he can find a call with a set of deuces or even two pair. In reality, I'm almost never bluffing in this spot. It's tough for me to even think of a bluff that I could have except maybe King Jack of Hearts or perhaps if I just decided to get wild with King Jack offsuit and the King of Spades only floating the turn to bomb if a spade came off on the river. As Brad says, it actually is kind of hard to find a whole lot of logical bluffs in this situation because unless you had a gut shot with a backdoor flush draw, I mean, like, there's not a whole lot of draws available, right? Notice five, four of hearts got there. Any spades made a flush. It is hard to find bluffs. And to be fair, in GTO world, you probably want to be turning a whole lot of top pairs with a spade into a bluff in this scenario some portion of the time, or maybe middle pairs if you have them with a spade. But again, a whole lot of those just don't even make it to the turn against the check raise on the flop. So this is a spot where it really is hard to find logical bluffs. And this spot does come up a lot in live poker where if your opponents don't have a whole lot of logical bluffs and a whole lot of nuts, you should be drastically overfolding in the opponent's shoes in the spot. Small blind isn't sure whether to call or fold. He's gonna do his best two-phase impression and leave it up to chance. Watch him in the brown shirt closely and listen closely as well. Heads I call you. Hmm. The opponent says, heads I call you. If you're ever playing live poker, verbal is binding. Now, in this spot, if the dealer just hears, I call you, well, then you called. If Brad in this scenario just hears, I call you and turn his cards up, I think the floor person may actually rule this as you called. Now, look. You don't want to be angle shooting people, either in Brad's shoes or the opponent's shoes. And to make sure that we have a nice, clean, fair game, you can say, all right, I'm going to flip a coin now. If it lands on heads, I'll be in. If it doesn't land on tails, I'll be out. I'm, or whatever. If it lands on heads, I'll be in. If it lands on tails, I'll be out. You know what I'm trying to say. You do not want to say the words, I call. And you do not want to say the words, I fold, unless that is what you plan to do. This is a big blunder by the opponent. And I bet in a lot of casinos against a lot of players who are perhaps a little bit angle shooty, they'll get you. And to be fair, maybe the opponent's actually trying to angle Brad by saying, heads I call, to get Brad to turn his hand face up and it's a bluff and then you just call every time. Again, this is not be the case in this scenario because the opponent apparently likes Brad and likes his channel, so this player will not be angling him. But don't put it past players who try to pull an angle like this against you. So if you're in Brad's shoes, the right players just sit here do nothing and perhaps try to confirm what has actually happened. Always make sure you know what's happening before you ever reveal your hand or make it clear at all if you have a good hand or not. But anyway, make sure everything is clear when you are playing poker. It is vitally important. The player says, heads, I call you and tosses a coin into the middle. You can see my hand immediately reach for my cards because the only words I process from a sentence is, I call, and then I see him flick a circular thing into the middle. He said it all pretty quickly, and I almost turned my cards face up, thinking that he called, and I won a massive pot. Ooh, you know what I want to know? Given Brad thinks that the opponent called, or maybe thought the opponent called, but then Brad's played live poker, he realizes what's going on. Do you think that maybe this was an angle? Heads, I call you. I don't know. Take a second. Think about it. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. While you're down there, click the like and subscribe button. Luckily, I realized what actually happened, and I don't turn my cards over. I don't suspect that the player meant it as an angle, but he certainly could have gotten some more information from my reaction. In real time, it's pretty easy to be confused about what's going on in that scenario. Apparently, the coin landed on tails because the opponent folds. He's friendly with me after and would later tell me that he had ace-10 for two pair. The coin helps him out a lot. Still, we win another large pot. It's a new high point for the day. We're up over 2,500 on the session. Ace-10 for two pair folding. You know, that's kind of the reason I would have potentially gone smaller in this spot, especially given, as Brad said, it's hard to find bluffs. But Brad went for the big bet, which is, you know, obviously reasonable with the super nuts. He doesn't get paid, but he still wins a very nice pot. That's me for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, click the like and subscribe button below. Just for fun. Just for being here. Just because you like the video. Because you like the content. Also, make sure you check out Brad's channel as well. Brad makes a lot of great content. He does hard work. He shows you a ton of hands. And I'm very glad that he is here in the poker space sharing the content with you and for letting us use his content. Good luck in your games. Have fun. When you make the nuts, I hope you get paid. And I'll talk to all of you next time. Thanks for watching.